Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today we are going to get some life advice for specific dilemmas from classic literature. So I asked some characters from literary classics to write in with their life problems and I'm going to put those to my friend and guest spinster Robin. Robin is a great friend, fantastic advice giver, she's also a teacher, so I'm sure she'll be able to help these characters out a little bit. Robin is also entirely unfamiliar with these works of classic fiction, so she'll be answering my questions with the intention of giving these people the best advice possible without knowing what they actually end up doing in those books. But before we give her a call, let me just give you a little spoiler warning. If you, like me, don't want to get spoiled for classics you haven't yet read, then uh, go and check out the description box where I have included timestamps with the titles of those classic works of fiction and you can navigate the video through those. You can skip the books that you don't want to get spoiled about very easily. Okay, let's give Robin a call. All right, Robin. So, um, the first problem we have is from a young man named Dorian, and this is what he wrote in. Dear Robin, my Instagram followers keep asking for my skincare routine, but I'm too embarrassed to admit that I actually sold my soul in exchange for eternal beauty. I'm really worried they'll find out about the cursed painting in the attic, and it's getting really hard to explain while I still haven't got any wrinkles at age 38. I don't think people believe me when I say that it's all about sunscreen and sheet masks. Should I tell them the truth? Oh, Dory, I'm so sorry to hear this predicament. It's a really tough one, isn't it? Oh, gosh, I, I really, this is just, you know, going straight in there. I, I, I feel like perhaps um, you might then put yourself into a, a situation where maybe you'll be sort of isolated from people if you do reveal the truth. Um, at the end of the day, it is common knowledge that sheet masks and sunscreen does work. So you could continue with and just say you have got a religious regime and perhaps get some products just to kind of put that illusion out there. And I'm, I'm not saying to lie, but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes the truth does hurt and it may also come back and hurt you too. So I think it's very rare that I would say lie, but maybe on this one, just for your own protection and perhaps the protection of others, I would stick with the uh, skincare regime. Do you think that maybe he's he is in, in danger of being discriminated against if he does reveal the whole selling your soul to the devil thing? I really think so, you know, is it, I mean, it, we could go back to, you know, the whole burn the witch thing and we just don't want to be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, there you go, Dorian. That's, uh, that's the advice for you there. Let's just move on to the next person then. This is from Jane and she writes, Dear Robin, I'm in love with my boss and he's into me as well, but I've just found out that he's already married. Also, he keeps his wife locked up in the attic of his manor house. Should I leave him or not? <laughs> well, I mean, at the end of the day, if she's locked up, away then it's not really going to have an effect on your relationship with him as long as she never comes into it you know <laughs> you don't think jane should have any concern for the ex i mean you know is she fed do we have more information on this situation as long as she's being kept and treated well within those four walls <laughs> there you go jane just the ex-wife who cares <laughs> Yeah, I think I think she'll appreciate that. You know, I mean, I don't want to reveal anything that she hasn't already said, but she's really head over heels, like to an obsessive degree. And you've got to follow your heart at the end of the day. So sometimes in these situations, you have just got to be selfish and, and do what's right for you, even if that does mean that someone is held in captivity, you know? That's not her problem. <laughs> right, Jane? <laughs> there you go, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> our next uh, p person, p patient, cl client. The next, the next letter is from another young woman. Her name is Hero, and she writes, 
Dear Robin, my boyfriend thinks I cheated on him, but I totally didn't. Now my cousin says she wants to eat his heart in the marketplace. She's a bit of a man-hater anyway. How do I stop her from committing an act of cannibalism? My goodness. Um, I mean, could you perhaps find, I don't know, maybe redirect that cannibalistic sort of you know, vibe from her and move it to other places such as beef, chicken, they all have livers and hearts that she could perhaps, you know, I don't know, I think you need to just redirect her energy at the same time make it very very clear to your to your boyfriend how much he means to you and then perhaps if she sees that you two are beginning to work again then you know that cannibalism will will redirect perhaps maybe not to uh, animals but at least not to your boyfriend so you think communication between hero and her boyfriend will lead the cousin to back off because she sounds like quite the handful there yeah, literally. Uh, I, I, well, I hope so. I, I, I mean, I feel like it's good to be transparent in this situation. I mean, perhaps even a bit of communication with the cousin as well, once things have been sorted with the boyfriend. Um, I think that's the, where the main concern is. I know that there is a, a worry of cannibalism, but at the end of the day, you know, if you are working with your boyfriend, you are present with him, and then your cousin won't be able to uh, do anything whilst you're there. I'm sure she wouldn't do that, or at least I would hope not. But yes, transparency and communication is key. Great, some great advice there for you, Hero, uh, for a very specific and rather unique problem. Mm. Okay, uh, the next letter is uh, anonymous, so the, the writer only gives her name as Mrs. W. Dear Robin, I just got married to this super rich older guy and now I have to live in this creepy old house. His housekeeper hates me. I think she prefers my husband's first wife. I'm really shy though and hate confrontation. How do I get rid of the housekeeper? I think this is also going to take us back to communication. I think you need to communicate with your, your older <clears throat> husband um you know at the end of the day if that marriage is, is to work then you have to feel comfortable in your own home and if, if you don't want that confrontation with the housekeeper who i presume was there before you were given that she knew the uh the first wife then you know perhaps it is worth having that conversation or um alternatively if you would feel guilty for her being asked to leave her post by your husband you could maybe rather than confronting this the situation head on you could be sort of um kill with kindness so be you know really kind perhaps leave a gift or a positive note for her to make the housekeeper feel included um as well and then perhaps that could be something that could maybe unite you, you you know all of you together so that you feel all of you feel comfortable in that house i think at the end of the day if you're not comfortable then the marriage isn't ever going to work and at the end of the day it is you and him and there's not the third person in that relationship that's really good advice do you think there might be an issue there with uh, mrs w being probably quite a bit younger than the housekeeper as well maybe there is a sort of I guess a lack of authority in her, in, in her being basically an employer now. And how does she overcome that? Yeah, um, well, I think it could be that. Um, and if that is the case, then again, I think just being kind and, and you know, having the presence within the household not necessarily by being confrontational but just by being there by actively you know don't avoid spaces just do what you need to do be kind when when there is that confrontation of you know being with the housekeeper in the same room and just being there and i think eventually the housekeeper will come around to accept that, that you are there mrs w but i also think that perhaps maybe there was a really strong bond with the first wife and you know we all know that it's quite difficult if you have got a friendship or a relationship with somebody you, you almost want to protect and defend that relationship so i mean perhaps try and see it from her side as well maybe get some stories maybe you know see what their relationship was like and, and start that conversation rather than making it sort of the elephant in the room kind of thing fantastic so we're just straight back to communication and uh, i hope that mrs w has an amazing marriage with or without the housekeeper Right, shall we move on to the next one? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> this is another anon anonymous 
uh, person and uh, they just give their name as the creature so we don't even know the gender here and this is what they write dear robin my plastic surgery went wrong and now I look absolutely hideous. Everyone is really scared of me and it's making me feel a bit murderous. I just really want to kill everyone, but especially the surgeon. Should I? Um... No. I think that would be a very irresponsible thing to do. I think that um, murder will only bring you bad fortune bad karma and it will only ever get worse for you from there on so ultimately no if you are unhappy with the results of your surgery then i think it's definitely worth trying to resolve that with your surgeon um in terms of your murderous kind of emotion that's coming out perhaps you need to see a counselor regarding that just don't take any sharp objects with you um and i think you know, at the end of the day, people will love you for who you are on the inside. So as long as you give, you're giving off the good, calm, patient vibes, you should be okay and you can move on from this with a calm, sensible approach rather than an axe-murdering crazy man, woman, they. Um, so I know that you are an agony aunt and not a, a barrister or a legal expert, but would you recommend that maybe the creature looks into legal action? I, I certainly think so. It's really hard for me to say, like you say, without being more of an expert. Certainly there will have been contracts to have been signed in case anything goes wrong. So go through those, check the small print. And yeah, I really think that that is possible. And again, if if it costs a little bit of money, it's still worth more than getting yourself put in prison for murdering people. Yeah, I mean, very clearly, Creature, this is weighing heavily on your mental health. And um, I'm really hoping that you can resolve this without resulting to a life of crime. I agree. And I, I am sorry to hear that you're struggling so much, Creature. And I'm, I'm really happy that you have reached out today. So I hope that the advice we've given is, you know, some that you will take on board and perhaps, you know, it will help you moving forward. We've got our final letter. And this is from Fitzwilliam. And this is what he has to say. This is a fairly short one. Dear Robin, I really like this girl and I tried to ask her out, but I accidentally insulted her and her entire family. Is there still hope? I'm pretty hot and very rich if that helps. Okay, Fitzwilliam, perhaps it wasn't just the fact that you offended, perhaps it was your massive ego. So that head that is growing, you know, shrink it down a little bit and, you know, just put a little bit of a a lid on that ego because no one has time for that um but yes i mean if you can control that ego and if you can start to um you know perhaps see what's inside you and how lovely you are if that's there then yes there could be hope as long as you can find a way to show that to the the one that you're interested but i think the more that you focus on your good looks and your wealth i think that really there isn't any hope so if you can put that aside and just see that as a bonus to who you are then perhaps it could work out but I'm afraid if you can't pull your focus away from your looks and wealth I'm not sure it's going to work out so I really think you need to consider your priorities here. Yeah that's really good advice it's, it's just not sexy is it? No no what you know you could be the most good looking man in the world but if you have an ego like that no one's going to be attracted to you I'm afraid. Right. How how do you think he should make it up with the girl's family? Well, I I see nothing wrong in admitting that you're wrong and saying that, you know, perhaps you got a little hot-headed with the situation and you panicked and I do apologise and I would love to make up for this. I, maybe he could go around and make them all dinner or invite them around. I'm not sure what the living situation is, but invite them around for dinner or, you know, perhaps take them on an experience. If he's got the wealth, just don't make a point of, you know, it doesn't have to be an expensive trip out, but it could just be something small that you can afford in order to, you know, give them a, a good time and focus on them rather than yourself. That's great advice. Right, that was all of the people that wrote in and I hope they all come away from this a bit more enlightened and hopefully with some hope for the future. I really hope so too and I'm, I'm really grateful that they did write in. I feel that, you know, it's good to reach out. That's the most important thing. That's the, you know, the first step into making things work themselves out. So take on the advice and perhaps even seek other advice from other people and good luck to you all. I really wish you the best.
great and also robin if you're up for this um if i if i get more uh, people writing in uh, more characters from classic literature that really need your advice would you be able to uh, do a follow-up video to this oh absolutely yes and i would love to hear as well how the situations did progress with with the writers today as well you know if, see if they if they have made good good progress on their situation too that's great. So if you are a character from classic literature and you have a problem that you want our resident agony aunt and guest spinster Robin to solve, then comment down below with your problem and we'll put it to her next time. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you for watching. Bye.